Connor, we don't have any time for chit chat. We got to get right to the show. What's well, poppin', players? Welcome back to the Two Penny Games Cast. I am your host, Tav and Bothel, here with my good friend and co-host, Connor Elliott. Connor, say hi to hi the guys. people. That was fast. We're trying to be fast, right? <laughs> we had to go fast. We don't have any time this week to 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 play around because we've got two shows to record. Yeah, someone is having to go on a little uh, trip. I'm going on a little trip. I'm not going to be here next week, so we're actually pre-recording next week's episode directly after we record this week. So next week is not going to be up on the latest and greatest news like this week is. By the way, this is the Two Penny Games cast. You can get us every week on YouTube and on SoundCloud and eventually everywhere else. Eventually. Eventually. I'm going to keep Bold saying statement. that until I actually get off my ass and do it. Um, so basically, the whole thing of this show is every week, me and my friend Connor here, we come and bring you the latest and greatest news. We bring our two pennies, our two topics, uh, and we give you our two cents on them. And as of right now, we have to get right to it, because next week, we have to pre-record. So, I'm gonna start off with topic number one, my first penny. Uh, AT&T decides not to sell WB Games. Uh, this is from an article from Game Rant by Lauren Rose. Uh, according to early reports, Warner Bros. Interactive Entertainment was on the market as a parent company, AT&T, looked to sell off some of its assets. But a new report claims that the telecommunications company may have reconsidered the decision to sell its valuable WB Games division. Warner Brothers Games incorporates a number of big-name game developers, including Rocksteady, NetherRealm, and Warner Bros. Montreal, which would all be included in the sale of the WB Games branch. The sale was said to be worth up to $4 billion that would help to stem the massive debt that AT&T is currently facing. Big players such as Microsoft and EA were said to be circling the deal, but the sale may be off the table, according to news sources. So, Connor, this is a story that's been building for quite a few weeks. I don't know if we've ever talked about it. We never have. This is the first time, so... It seems like everything's kind of come to a head, and they're deciding they, to sell it. They said, never mind. Uh, yeah, so this this is a story that's been building for a long, long time uh, of, hey, you know, AT&T, we own WB. We're looking to sell off the games division. Uh, there were rumors that Microsoft was coming in to buy. EA was coming in to buy. We didn't know where it was going to go. Um, of course, uh, the WB game side that includes games like Mortal Kombat, mm-hmm. Injustice, basically all the DL, the DC games. So like Batman is in there and and all those crazy big games. A lot of money to be made in that. In that A area. lot of money yeah, to so. be made in that. So much so that obviously AT&T didn't know what they were giving away mm-hmm. and said, "Oh, wait, 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 <laughs> wait, 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 wait." Yeah, um, I'm assuming the people that make these kinds of decisions just saw, they make video games? Who cares about video games? Sell yeah, it. Uh, you don't need it. These are some old suits. Has said, to oh, be wait it. a minute. You want how much? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. We're going to invest in this. Yeah. I, there also might be, after the, the DC fandom, all the bigger headlines were from the Suicide Squad and from the, uh-huh. you know, well, from the Batman, but the biggest headlines were from Suicide Squad and from Gotham Knights and stuff, so I'm sure some of that attention also might have you know, put the nail in the coffin of the decision of, hey, never mind, we're going to keep this on our side. Now, it it still can change as of right now. They've kind of decided they're going to keep it for now. Everything's under rumors, but Mm -hmm. I'm going to assume, yeah, no, this isn't happening, and and, uh, AT&T is going to keep hold of all of this mm-hmm. real uh, honestly a smart decision at the end of the day because those, those games are gonna be Batman gonna be come like, on what like are you doing Mortal Kombat every single time a new Mortal Kombat game comes out it, it does the, new, it the, always the wave does comes well. in and there's the, a yeah, core they buy. group of fans of fighting games who just come in and buy Mortal Kombat every two years that yeah. Mortal Kombat comes out man I hope they make another Injustice I like Injustice huh. don't know if they will actually the last one did I don't know, good they might. didn't it uh, they might just make another branded Game. Yeah, and Justice Two did real well. Yeah, real well, real well. Um, what was that game they made a long time ago? Wasn't it like Mortal Kombat versus DC? More, yeah, more, Mortal or, Kombat versus DC Universe. Yeah. Or yeah, DC Universe. That one not saying. not so great. That, that's what I heard. Yeah, so maybe who knows? Maybe they'd give that one another shot. Maybe I wouldn't mind that, especially since um, Nether Realms is really kicking ass mm-hmm. with Mortal Kombat and stuff. So who knows? And they've really stepped up their their story department. Oh, yeah, big over time. there, because the, the story for Injustice 2, I never played it, but I watched all the cutscenes and mm-hmm. stuff online. The story for that game was crazy. Mm-hmm. 
like multiple branching paths. Yes, I know. Insane. Like, multiple different endings. Different endings. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a lot for a fighting game. A lot mm-hmm. for a fighting game. You know, which is basically just banging action figures together. Pretty much, yeah. But the equivalent of that. It's fun. You and I, not the biggest fan of fighting games. No, I, I, I've tried my hand at some of them. Not that good. I'll stick to Smash Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Smash Brothers. That's all. That's all I can. Re- I think it's as high as my skill without putting lots of hours into a fighting game will take me. Have we ever so talked about? There. Have we ever talked about how the fighting game community hates Smash Brothers? Oh, they, but who cares? Like it's fun. They care, but we don't. That's true. We don't. Yeah, we Smash don't. is a fighting game. Go fucking cry to your moms. If you, if you like, if you like Smash, sure. If you hate it, sure. Who cares? Right. Right. Uh, it's staying. It's not leaving anywhere. <laughs> there's nothing. No. There's yeah, like. What are you gonna just ban Smash Brothers? No, it makes too much money. Yeah. It makes it brings in too many eyes because it's Smash Brothers. People, it's they, at the end of the day, people play more Smash Brothers than they do Street Fighter. Yeah, well, Street Fighter's kind of seemingly gone down in recent no, years. No, 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 no. <laughs> Street Fighter's always that one. I would say Street Fighter is one of the bigger ones of the of the community. Yeah, I, I think the name. I mean, Mortal big, Kombat is like the more mainstream game, but I would say Street Fighter. That's that solid. Like we are fighters. Well, from maybe this is just me hanging out with a friend of mine too much, but it seems like the Japanese fighting games are the bigger market in the FGC community. So I, I don't really see much conversation about Mortal Kombat and Injustice. I think that's very. Uh, Oh, in the it, very oh, localized in the, in the West, and not really much. Yeah, it's elsewhere. a um, yeah, it's just a mainstream Western yeah. fighters. But uh, regardless, AT and T made the smart the smart move right now. Absolutely. We'll see if it goes anywhere differently, but you know, absolutely good for well, them, I hope, guess. Let's hope it means that, like, because even if if like, I, I'm sure this wouldn't have happened if Microsoft bought them. But if like EA bought them, you know, we weren't we wouldn't be getting games like. Suicide Squad or Gotham Knights anytime soon, if ever, because, you know, EA loves to come in, acquire, and then just sit on shit. Yep. And, I mean, look what they did with Star Wars. The majority mm-hmm. of Star Wars games we've gotten have been in the last two years. Yeah. You know, between Battlefront 2 and uh, Jedi Fallen Order and now Star Wars Squadrons. Before that, what, mm-hmm. what Star Wars game? Just some mobile games and the first rebooted Battlefront from 2015. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, and they acquired that license in 2013. I can't wait for them to lose that license. <laughs> you you want you want someone else to handle yes, it? Yes, man. I want, like, I want, like, I want, well, I want Bioware to make a Star Wars game again. But, but Bioware could a, not e- buy the IP at the yeah, moment, I feel. Yeah, that's an EA own thing. But, like, I would love to see Naughty Dog's take on Star Wars. I would love to see, um... You know, uh, any of these other legacy developer groups mm-hmm. take on Star Wars. You know, I couldn't see Naughty Dog taking on a franchise like Star Wars for their video games. I feel like they're more based on doing original games. Yeah, and not they, like they Star want their Wars. original stuff more than anything. Yeah. But, so, like, you can hope, but though, like, I guess. I don't know, like, an ins- uh, a, a Sucker Punch Star Wars I don't game know, please. would someone be t- fucking dope. Please, someone else take. Take, take Star Wars, please, please. <laughs> That's what you it's sound like good, right now, because <laughs> you really like, don't want AEA I like to Battlefront happen. 2. It launched horribly, and may we never forget that. Oh, yeah. Always hold them accountable for that. Come up with Battlefront one? 2 now, a lot of fun. If they come up with another one, they'll probably mess up again. They, <laughs> Most, they probably will. Yeah. Let's hope they don't, but they probably will. I, I, I would bet money that there's going to be a Battlefront 3 before this deal is up. Yeah. Yeah. I, the I, Jedi I Fallen Order that. 2, I hope is... You know, a great sequel to the first one, which is a pretty good game. Mm-hmm. You know, not a great game, but a pretty good one. So, but uh, when it comes specifically to WB games, like, I don't want to see, like, Goth- can you imagine a game like Gotham Knights under EA? Oh, my God. Ooh. That game would be microtransaction <laughs> to <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, I mean, EA has a bad reputation for a reason, and they would just butcher those games. And then Suicide Squad is a is a live service game. Like, oh, can you imagine that under, well, we can. Anthem. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I think they've already tried their hand in that market and failed, and I don't think they should go back to it. They should absolutely, absolutely stay away. Uh, anyway, so that's about it for topic one. Let's go ahead and move into uh, topic two, which, uh, yeah, we're going to jump straight into your first penny, Connor, which is uh, CD Projekt Red announces uh, that they are preparing to enter final, final certification. Uh, so this is an article from VGC by Andy Robinson. 
See, uh, Cyberpunk 2077 is preparing to enter certification and won't cost $70 on next generation. Oh, nice. The highly anticipated RPG shooter was recently postponed from September until November 19th. It was the second delay for the game this year after it slipped from its originally targeted April release date. Asked in an investor call on Thursday about CD Projekt's confidence of hitting its release target this time around, President Adam, uh, I'm going to guess, Kaczynski? Uh, said, so, quote, so yes, we are confirming, and, well, actually, today, we started preparing for the final certification, so we're very close. Of course, we'll work on the title till the very end. That's kind of normal. It's a huge game, but as we said, everything is on track, and we're planning to launch it on the 19th of November. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077 will be playable on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X consoles via backwards compatibility and a, quote, Proper, full-blown, next-gen version is planned for release next year. And it, oh, it's so nice to hear them say, no, I'm not, we're not doing $70. It's so nice to hear them say, um, mm-hmm. you know, that, it, it, hey, it's coming. We got it this time. I thought for certain they were going to hit their September release date. I'm going to assume COVID is yeah, the reason had to behind, have a reason why. Is behind. We didn't quite get that. But also they're perfectionists. Yeah. And like we've said, I think this is like the fourth time we've said this, a game getting delayed is almost oh, never a bad thing. It's never, 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 never a bad thing. Um, yeah, so I'm uh, – yes. what is your current hype level for Cyberpunk right I, now? I mean, it's my mo- – as of right now, it's my most anticipated game of the year. I, I, I could speak with a lot of other people that they feel the same way. And I, from your smirk, I feel like you have something else that you think <laughs> is better. I, I'm going to agree that now, after the news last week – Yes, this is now my most anticipated game of the year. Oh, well, well, last me? week it was, you know, a little little old game called uh, Lego Star Wars: The Sky- Skywalker. Oh, uh, sure. Oh, okay, that's the route you were going. I thought you were being serious. Okay, never mind. <laughs> no, but I'm still really excited to play no, yeah. games like Assassin's Creed this year. Yeah, um, oh. I'm interested to see what Watch Dogs is going to do. It's, I think there's something else I'm missing. It's just but. that Cyberpunk has been so anticipated for so many years now, and it's finally and just to be on the horizon. Witcher Three is so close to my heart that I just. Yeah, I can't not play their next game, you know. Um, yeah. And it looks, the conversation around Cyberpunk is like, oh, this is gonna be a ground, like a landmark moment in yeah. RPGs. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I believe all that. Let you know, let's get the game and see if it's just not a really good like Fallout type game. Well, they do have customizable dick size to have. I think that's important. that's a little bit of a that's little hint important. of the greatness that this game is going to be. <laughs> It's great. I love it. I love it. It's you know, great. It's you know, great, but it's stupid. A story like this so shows Is you think gonna be big or small. Yeah, yeah, you didn't think about this question, did you? I didn't. You have to think. Yeah, I was like, like, ah, it's big, and that's douchey. It's uh, a little douchey. Small? It's small. It's kind of it's kind of pussy stuff, right? Right. Well, my question is, because I assume there's like romances or something you can do. Uh, oh uh, no! Does your partner <laughs> react to the size of your genitals? Huh? Guess we'll have to wait for release date. That would see <laughs> the details on that, right? What do they just start laughing and certain romance options are just blocked oh, off because they're just like, ha ha, oh, that's it. Like, like you try and get like with like the real cocky yep, romance yep. option or something. And no, then they, and I'm then fine. They just look at you and go, no, never mind. I'm good. <laughs> that that would be funny, and then that would really be groundbreaking, wouldn't it? Uh, that would be you could you couldn't that, say that it wouldn't uh, be groundbreaking. Uh, uh, like, what other game would have the balls to do that none. other than Cyberpunk? Yeah. None. Or, you know, like what other game would have so small balls? You know what I'm saying? Oh, you know, yeah, double entendre. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! But you know, g- getting back on track, I I'm really happy that CD Projekt Red is just constantly proving to themselves that they can be good to their customers. They, 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 they them and Xbox right now, mm-hmm. Xbox as a whole, are are the most consumer um, focused focused mm-hmm. yeah in their in their market. Uh, CD Projekt has always. From day one, been like, no, nah, we're going to give you the things you want the way you want them. Yes. You know? One of the things I'm extremely happy about, beyond just the release date coming up, is the refusal of the $70 price tag for their new game. That's great. On Next Gen. Because, you know, we covered the story a while ago that uh, EA Sports was going to do, was planning on doing their NBA game mm-hmm. at $70 yeah. on Next Gen. And they nixed that for now, but they obviously haven't abandoned the idea entirely. And I'm just happy that a a company that's not as major as someone like Ubisoft or EA yeah. is coming out and saying, we're not going to do $70 games. Well, you know? it's, it's also important from the company that is making, you know, 
the biggest game, maybe the second biggest game of the year compared mm-hmm. to Last of Us, is saying no, we're not doing that. Yeah, you're you know taking a stand, and we're, taking we're, a, we're taking a hard do stand. that. And it's crazy because it's not unfamiliar for the conversation to be when it comes to price tags and video games. Witcher Three is a game where people often side of like, I would have paid a hundred dollars for Witcher Three, <laughs> yes. like, and it's kind of hard to to be like. Like, Witcher 3 gives you so much bang for your buck Mm -hmm. that, like, sure, yeah, you probably could have gotten away with charging a little more for that game. Right. You know, and people still would have bought it and still would have loved it and still would have been, you know, it still would have been heralded as the great RPG that it is. Yeah. And and Cyberpunk has so much work behind it that I could see them somehow turning it around saying, well, you know, $70 is kind of worth the scale we're going with. But they just said, no, $60 is enough, and that's what we're going to do. Yeah. Well, I think if maybe if this game came out a few years from now, they probably could have been like, "Yeah, nah, we're doing seventy dollars." But it's it been the way things go. It's been like a, it's been in the eyes of the consumer. It's been a PS4 and an Xbox One game for years because they announced this game before Witcher Three even came out. Yeah, um, that cool reveal trailer and nothing else for years after the fact. And then we just, got, I, it, now we're coming. I think it's fine to have something great on the horizon that you're like, I oh, don't know, yeah. I don't know when that's coming, but. I'm sure it's com- – like Elder Scrolls, don't know when it's coming, but when I play it, yep. I'm going to – or when it comes, I'm going to play it. You know, it, like, it really depends on the franchise. Like if some other games did it, I'd be like, why did you announce this now? Yeah. But with yeah. Cyberpunk, Witcher hadn't come out like you said yet, yeah. and we were still looking forward to that. And it's like, oh, well, that's their next goalpost is yeah. Cyberpunk. Well, I even feel that way. Like I feel like Ghost of Tsushima got announced a little too early. I feel like – just a little too early. Not dramatically, no. but just a little bit. Um it could, it could, it could. I don't think it really affected it anyway, but it could have been done a little bit later and yeah. not really. And I think obviously had any games like on it. Bayonetta, th- Bayonetta three <laughs> got announced like mad or like yep. we haven't even seen any. That game got announced two years ago. Nintendo needs to realize that their fan base can be really fucking stupid <laughs> and just like <laughs> and like just say like you know they're going to be for years saying. Bayonetta 3, Bayonetta 3, and then they're going to get angry. Bayonetta 3, Bayonetta 3. Are we angry about Bayonetta 3? No, we're not. Most people aren't, but there's yeah. there's people out there that are I'm, angry. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's past time. I mean, even uh, it is, uh, but- Metroid Prime 4 got announced too early, but obviously they said, hey, it's not working. We're moving. We're restarting, and we're moving into a different studio and stuff and so forth. Mm-hmm. But this is great news. Uh, it's great to hear that Cyberpunk is coming. I would I would have been shocked. I like I would have bet a lot of money that they would have hit this date this November, oh, same here. this November date because they didn't need to give us a date to begin with. No, they didn't. And then they gave us an April date and they said, "Oh, wait, April, we were a little hasty, <laughs> sorry." Yeah. September. And then COVID happened, so now we're like, "Ah, fuck. Okay. <laughs> no, not September, November." Okay, cool. We can wait that much. Yeah, for a game like this, no problem. Yeah. So let's go ahead and jump into uh, our third topic, your second penny. Yes, go, CD Projekt Red hitting it once again. Once again. <laughs> just really to prove just that doing they're still good. so fucking consumer-focused. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt is coming to the next generation. This is from the Witcher uh, website. Uh, we're working on the next, generation, the next generation edition of the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Developed to take advantage of the most powerful gaming hardware, the next-gen edition of the game will feature a range of visual and technical improvements, including ray tracing and faster loading times across the base game, both expansions and all extra content. The next generation edition of The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt will release as a standalone purchase for PC, Xbox Series X, and PlayStation 5, as well as a free update for everyone who already owns the game on PC, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4. This is great news. I, now we, I, we also saw that uh, uh, Dead by Daylight is doing the same thing. I wanted to mention that as well, which uh, – that one was really surprising because I didn't which think I, they would. But I doubt Dead by Daylight is going to be like such a crazy update like this they did, this is an update. Yes, no, yeah. They did say they were doing graphical improvements, which that game sure, could Sure, but use. what does it mean? But that game is ugly when it came out. Like, but now it, well, now it doesn't have to be. And it's ugly now. <laughs> hey, it doesn't have to be anymore. But it, regardless – It never had to be. Regardless, let's – I, just to bring it up, mm-hmm. Control had a news that broke pretty recently where they weren't – they were going to give people – We talked about a, this on the show. Yes, we did talk about it on the show. They were going to give people a free update for their game if you bought, like, the collector's definitive yeah, edition. Yeah, $40 collector's edition, yeah. whatever, which – But for original per- uh, like buyers of the game, they weren't going to get Just screwed. So yeah. if we – so, like, if I had bought the game and then your season passed and I had supported you – I still have to go buy this $40 version to play it on my PS5. 
even though you're going to be releasing da- uh, DLC post PlayStation 5 release. Mm-hmm. What the fuck? <laughs> and um, then here come the creators of Dead by Daylight. I can't remember them off the top of my head. I don't and know them either. CD Projekt Red just saying, oh, no, we're just going to yeah, casually. And I'm sure there, there's many like more that. games who are doing this. I've seen them. I've yeah. seen this headline but, coming across. But Witcher doing it means something. And especially because it already looks so amazing. And if they're really going to be de- like doing this many changes to it, what's it going to look like on next gen? Exactly. It's going to be great. Yeah. And because that free. game, st- it still holds up on PS4. Um, I own it on PC, but I've never played it on PC. I'm <laughs> yeah. sure it looks fucking phenomenal. On that, PC. Uh, apparently, that's the way people usually play it yeah. on PC. So my question is: Is I own it on disc on PS4? How does that work for getting my free update version on PS5? I mean, the, your PS4 probably has you know data proving that you have the game. So I'm some, assuming that may work like, into it somehow. Like, hey, do I just got to plug in my disc into the yeah. PS5? Well, this is a new territory, so I'm and guessing then, there's some again, plans being course, hashed out about it. Yeah, and I'm not expecting this update. At launch, I'm expecting this mm-hmm. a year from now or whatever. Um, and then also, like, and this, these are questions that we need answered by the console manufacturers. I think Xbox is an obvious yes, but will my uh, PS4 discs work on PS5 or only my digital copies? Like, these are questions mm-hmm. that they've yet to answer. Yeah. Um, I, I'm assuming it's not going to be just delegated to if you bought yeah. on digital no, versions of the game. I, I assume they're going to do it right. Yeah, yeah. We, it will, like, we, they have time to hash out how they're going to do it, so just wait till then. Yeah. You know, we can wait, because obviously they're finishing up Cyberpunk, so they don't really want to make this a main that, that, priority. Yeah, and that's, that's really all we need right now. We've yeah. played like, enough. We've all played enough Witcher. Yeah. Like, and they also have Cyberpunk multiplayer coming out. You know, that's still being yeah, made. Yeah, like, something like six months after yeah. Witcher 3 releases. Or, I'm sorry, Cyberpunk releases or something. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and I would rather all of that work out much, much better than, yes. than just getting an update to Witcher 3. As good as it may be. Yeah. yeah. Which, you know, I'm going to revisit Witcher 3 at some point in my life because that's one of my favorite games ever. It is a so. pretty amazing game. Anyways. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into, into topic four, my second penny. All right. We're really uh, just going through these, you know, aren't we? We are blazing <laughs> through this today. But I think this one might take up a little bit of time just because there's a lot of information to delve into. So this Thursday... Um, Nintendo held a direct, a surprise direct, nobody knew it was coming, for Mario's uh, 35th anniversary celebration, in which they announced a whole bunch of games and um, merchandise and a whole bunch of new cool stuff that they're doing. But there's a bit of an asterisk next to all of this, Connor. Connor, did yeah. you watch the direct? No, I did not. No, okay. No, I did That's not, great. actually. That's fantastic. Because you want to so tell me, right? Let, let me run... You threw all of these announcements real quick because some are more important than others, and we'll we'll double back to the more important ones. But let me run you through these announcements real quick and see if you can pick up on anything strange. Have you seen any headlines? Oh, about? I, I I I'm pretty confident I know what you're going to bring up. Okay, so it starts off with a Super Mario Game and Watch. It's a limited production coming out November 13th. Play mm-hmm. the original Super Mario Brothers on like a little Game and Watch thing. Cool little accessory item, whatever. Uh. Then they announced that Super Mario 3D World is coming to Switch along with the Bowser's Fury expansion. That's coming February 12th. Fantastic. People love uh, Super Mario 3D World. Uh, then they announced Super Mario Brothers 35, a Nintendo Switch online only available for play October 1st to March 31st. And it's, of, of course, digital only. This is a battle royale where you play super mario brothers and you send enemies to the other screens and stuff it's very tetris 99 but Uh mario uh mario kart live home circuit october 16th this comes out i'm gonna stop here do you know what this is no no at all this is a um mario kart uh ar game in which you put like little rc cars that are Mm -hmm. modeled after mario so it's like mario it's a mario kart rc car and you model it or, or and it's got a camera on it and you play it, uh, if the trailer is to believe, on your Switch, and you set up checkpoints like in your living room or whatever. Uh-huh. And as you're playing on your Switch uh, and going on the course that you've set up, uh, it look like on your Switch it looks like a game of Mario Kart, but the map is your living room. Yeah, I see. You know, and you look in you look in real life, and it's just RC cars racing each yeah. other. But they you, they're using. Like, there's animations on it and items that you're throwing around. It looks like Mario Kart, That's but in your living room. pretty amazing. It looks pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. 
I don't know if I'm going to get it. <laughs> but if, if it it's going to cool. work even, you know, I'm assuming uh, it probably I, I, I will. I assume it works. Nintendo usually makes some pretty good stuff. Like, they Nintendo do. Labo works. Yeah. That, that shocked me. I was like, there's <laughs> no way that's going to work. That's some gimmick bullshit. And it worked. And I was like, oh, okay, good. Um, and then uh, they ran through some smaller things. So you can compete in challenges found on the official Mario website for rewards and stuff. Uh, that's running from September 3rd to the end of March. Mario Kart Tour, the mobile game, is running a special event where you get uh, skins of original Mario and Donkey Kong Jr. from the original Donkey Kong game. Uh, special items and merchandise are available at the New York and the online stores. That's cool for people who like your little uh, uh, merchandise. Uh, a special anniversary speed run course is coming to Mario Maker 2 in November. Uh, Smash Bros. Ultimate will have an online tournament later this year. Super Mario Splatfest is taking place in Splatoon 2 with Mario keychains available as rewards in January. Uh, Mario-themed furniture is added uh, to Animal Crossing New Horizons in March. And then additional merchandise and products are being added mm-hmm. as we continue through these months. So just cool little things that you can get. I like that it's, it's being celebrated in other games like Splatoon and Animal Crossing. Yeah. That's fun. Um, and then we got into the heavy hitters here. Yes, yeah, okay. So and you can experience somewhere. four classic Mario games in Mario All-Stars, available now on the SNES Nintendo Switch collection, uh, including Super Mario Brothers 1, 2, and 3, and Super Mario Brothers The Lost Levels, and this includes some, some audio and visual upgrades. Now, do you know what Super Mario Brothers The Lost Levels is? No. Yeah, no. I'm, assuming, I'm assuming it's a collection of levels that never got put in any game. No, Connor. It's a whole game. That never got released. So here, here's a little oh. bit of uh, video game history and oh. trivia for you. Okay. Super Mario Brothers 2, as we know it here in the West, is not Super Mario Brothers 2. This is a typical thing that happened back in the day with yeah, Japanese this games. Is some yeah. Jap- it's, a, it's an entirely different game. Mm-hmm. Reskinned. I forget what the original game was called. Uh, but it's a different game reskinned with Mario characters. Um, and released in the West. Uh-huh. They did this because the Super Mario Brothers 2 they made was considered too hard, <laughs> too difficult for Americans. And I've seen gameplay of the first level. Oh, yeah, it's hard. It is. <laughs> it's hard. It's it the Dark hard. Souls of the Mario franchise, huh? In terms of difficulty. By far. <laughs> like, it looks tough. <laughs> um, so it, it's, it, it's cool that we're getting all these things, and it's coming to the, the little SNES stream games thing uh-huh. that, that is on your Switch that you can get. And then they ended it with... The biggest news that I saw going around everywhere. And, and I, think, I think it's appropriate to call it the biggest news. Super Mario 64, Sunshine, and Galaxy, available on Switch in the Super Mario 3D All-Stars collection. All games have been up Sunshine has been upgraded to 16x9, and Galaxy has uh, Joy-Con support because mm-hmm. Galaxy was, a Wii, was one of those first Wii yeah. games, so there's a lot of, like, shaking uh-huh. gimmicks to it. I'm curious if that means uh, you can only play it with Joy-Cons or if you can play it with a regular oh, controller or if you can play it handheld. Well, I've back, got questions. Back in the day, you could play it on a GameCube controller, couldn't you? Or is that completely like, no, you can't do that? I don't remember. It, it was a weird time. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Uh, Anyways, this is coming September 18th in a limited physical and digital edition until the end of March 2021. Hmm. Interesting. So so you may have picked up something a little weird. Why are you – why – what is this fake – and and it's a general theme throughout the entire – I know, I know. I heard it All of this is lasting until March 31st. Mm -hmm. Super Mario Brothers 35 until March 31st. Um, All of your – Little events and stuff, that, which that makes a little more sense for that to have an end date, like all your challenges yeah, and your yeah. events and stuff that you're holding in other games, until March 31st. That makes a little more sense. Why are you limiting games? Super, Mar- I don't know about the uh, the classic SNES games because they didn't say it in the direct. Uh-huh. Um, so I don't know if those are here to stay for good, which would make sense. They're old and whatever. But why for, – for a game, $60 that we have to purchase – for the uh, 3D All Stars collection, why is it only available until March 31st? <laughs> like, yeah, what is the reasoning for this? There's you, no, there. You could argue like, oh, this is like a collector's edition. Only the true fans get this. Yeah, no, that's, but that's stupid. That's, though it's just a lie. Yeah. You're just lying. Like, why? you know, it's weird because they obviously have something planned, right? Like, they, they have to. They have. It's all the same date. Like something has to be happening then. 
for them to decide to do this. No, I, well, I think that's just the date that they – I think it's something to do with their quarters or maybe that's when the, the anniversary actually is or something. That's what I heard, but either way, it's really fucking stupid. It's real stupid. Really fucking yeah. stupid. And uh, people, I saw people getting angry at this because, you know, this game – I think rightfully so. No, wait, because this game was anticipated for the longest time. You know, Especially – this, this, this is a big thing. Yeah, yeah, people want so it for a long time. So people want it physically. Yes. Like they want the actual – cartridge and the case and everything yep. and you're saying you've only you're only going to make so many of them what people love these games all three of these games well, maybe not sunshine but all three of these games are classic in their own way also why just the blatant disrespect to to super mario galaxy 2 oh i saw that there <laughs> uh, honestly i was kind of more amused by it than anything else because so many people are upset why are we just just so blatantly disrespecting Galaxy 2. I because, don't understand. Because, Tevin, that's too much work. People like that game, though. But like, it's too much it work. In there. It's too it's much work. It's in the work. same engine. You see, my issue, that kind of stems the thing I was going to bring up. I, I, I was debating whether I would, but oh, I'm getting $60 this. seems a bit much. Well, that's Nintendo. Yeah, it's Nintendo, but... Like now, nah, you're you're really they've always pushed the envelope with how much they price their games. Like at. They, they charged us sixty dollars for the Wii U version of New Super Mario Bros. Yes. and then they charged us sixty dollars for that uh, Wii U Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze game. Exactly, like, this is what they do. I'm not saying it's good, but this is what they do. So that was expected. But this limited run bullshit is what really like. I'm like, what are you? Why? Yeah. Why? No reason to be this way. Now, as far as we no know, like, it, it, they could have been more transparent and said, "This is why we're doing it," but they're not. They're it just stinks acting like we don't of know. artificial like manipulation of the of the masses, like to be like to artificially create this uh, in demand lack of supply thing, like to like make the new hot uh, uh, Christmas toy or whatever. But you just don't. Your game is coming digitally. Yeah. <laughs> like, and they do this all the time. Like, they, they underproduced Switches at the launch of Switch to so that they could have headlines of, oh, stores are running out of Switches. Get one if you can. Like, all this nonsense. But the truth is, is, like, your sales would probably double if you would just let everyone have it. Nintendo does just a lot of stupid things. Yeah. I'm they also really confused do. as to why this Super Mario Brothers 35 game is only playable until March 31st. Right. Like, I mean, I understand like servers cost you money, but Tetris 9090 is still running. Yeah. Why are you flipping the switch on Mario? Much more people are going to play Mario than they are Tetris 99. Exactly. And, and, I mean, like at the end of the day, also games have done that for years now. Have active servers for yeah, a long time. And just, just Why are they all of a sudden like, oh, we we can't do that? Now they have always been behind on the online services. Nintendo mm-hmm. has, mm-hmm. so maybe it stems to that somehow. But like, but they haven't said anything either. Like, it all comes down to them just. But I feel like saying with, this random stuff and yeah. not giving reasons as to why they're doing it. But I feel like with Mario Thirty Five, like Mario Maker Two should have taught you that, like, oh, you can make money off of Mario in a microtransaction way. Yeah, like Mario Maker Two, you can play as Donkey Kong, <laughs> like a little like eight bit version of Donkey Kong or Princess Peach or Zelda or or Link. You know, all these characters who you can play. Just make those, like, little purchasable things, like, doll, like uh, you know, a dollar, like, pack for a couple of characters that I can play as. Mm-hmm. You know, give me the Donkey Kong pack. Yeah. And let me play as Donkey Kong, and the enemies are Donkey Kong enemies, and I'm sending those to other people's screens. Uh-huh. Or something like that. Um, I don't know. Are you going to try uh, no. Mario 35? No, I'm not. No? No interest? Okay. I'm going to try it. Um, We'll see how much I enjoy it. I'm not so I'm not as big of a Mario fan as you are. So, at the end of the day, like, I wouldn't even call myself a big fan. I just enjoy Mario. See, I, I'm, I'm I, I enjoy Mario too, but not enough to the point where I'd probably buy a lot of this stuff. You know, good for the people that want it. I mean, I'm gonna buy all the, the bad stuff. I'm gonna buy the the 3D All Stars collection because I haven't played 64 since I was like five years yeah. or younger. For a uh, long time. I, I don't think I ever played Sunshine. I haven't played Galaxies since I was a child. Like. 10 mm-hmm. um so i i'm excited to get the nostalgia hit of those games it'll be nice yeah um and then to experience sunshine so i'm gonna i'm, I'm excited to, to for all of that but yeah all these weird choices that they're making it's bullshit and i hate it and mm-hmm. i like this is like nintendo doing their like biggest nintendo like bullshit yeah thing. this is the biggest thing they've done in a while that just is stupid 
It's exhausting, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> like, come on, just, just give us games. Just give, it, just give it to us. Why are you doing – this is the exact opposite of CD Projekt Red. Oh, yeah, it is. Like, not in, like, so much of an insidious way, but just like a – why? Yeah. Why are you doing this? Um, <laughs> like, it just uh, – because you're not even helping yourself. You're hurting yourself. No, no. What, whatever it is they want to do, they can just do it. They can just do it. I guess it's their it stuff. But I'm still, you know, I'm going to buy it. Probably, <laughs> I'm going to buy it. I mean, I was probably going to get it digitally anyway because that's how I buy games and play games. Mm-hmm. But um, especially since you're only making so many physical copies, yeah, I'm getting a digital one. I'm not worrying mm-hmm. about all that right. pre-order nonsense. Fuck you, you know. Anyways, so that's that's it for the news this week, Connor. Yeah. Sort of a lighter week. Um Unfortunately, next week we're not going to be able to talk about the news. No. Which is unfortunate because Ubisoft is having their forward mm-hmm. in four days from, from this know. time of recording. So we're going <laughs> to miss all of that. I'm so excited for what Ubisoft has to offer. I'm excited. I'm excited, man. There's rumors of this Prince of Persia. Yeah. You know, they're going to show some, some Watchdog stuff probably. Some Hyperscape. Who cares about that? <laughs> um, Ooh, yeah. I kind of just... Oh, gone. yeah. That game, that game is not performing. Um... So let you want to just go ahead and jump into what we've been playing? I do. I do. All right. Uh, my pen has just shattered. Your pen. Shattered. So now you on. can't make timestamps. I can't make my timestamps, guys. So hold on. I'm going to put this on pause just a second. We'll be right back. All right. We're back. I've got a pen. <laughs> I've got a pen. <laughs> what happened to the other one? I threw it away because yeah. Yeah, I tried to put it back together and Poor it fell pen. apart again. So I was like, all right. Fuck it. Mm-hmm. Trash. So, um, so last week. Last week. I had been playing Vermintide 2. So really that's – the main thing I've played. That's pretty much all I've played, mm-hmm. to be honest, because I've had schoolwork. has taken a lot of time. Sure. But the one new game that I played oh. was at a friend's house, oh. and it really was a blast from the past. Oh. So the game that I played was some – now, granted, I'd never played this game before, but it was a game called Pokemon Battle Revolution. Now, <laughs> I, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he, my friend emulated it. On his PC, uh-huh. and he downloaded. Well, he actually he didn't need to, but basically we were able to create our own teams, and we had four people that were there, and we all battled it out in traditional six Pokemon battles, and it was super super fun. Because I played the Pokemon games a lot when I was a kid. Question: hmm? The uh, so there's four people battling at once? No, no, no. It w- there were just four people in the room at the time. Okay, so it's your classic out. like one v one. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, double teams, so two Pokemon out at the same time. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, we all took different types. I went with steel type because very high defense. They have a steel type? Oh, yeah. They have a steel type. Oh. And, yeah. It, it, just so people know, I, I, yeah. I have very little respect for Pokemon. Respect. Shout out to Phil, listener okay. of the podcast, friend of ours who we'll talk about here in a minute with our uh, Halo talk again. Uh-huh. Um, he loves Pokemon. And, boy, he needs to play Persona because that's, that's like Pokemon <laughs> but good. Well, uh, you could also make the same case for uh, Shimogami Tensei. So either one works. Just in general, yeah. Shimogami Tensei it games in general. Very, I mean, oh, okay. it's very yeah. similar. You use demons instead of Pokemon. But Phil play Persona. Any- Connor should <laughs> Phil play Persona. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's fun. It's I a really fun game. Very, Persona. very good game. I bought Persona Four for him on PC, and he's never played it. He hasn't touched it yet. Huh? That sounds like your problem though, because I never played Persona Four. Well, yeah, but you've played a Persona. You've played five. Yeah. Like, in, if you played one Persona game, you've kind of played them all. It's just kind of a... Whichever one you play first is which one you're going to like more. That's my stance Arguably. on the subject. Arguably. Yeah. <laughs> but Pokemon, I... It's... In the new generations are really not good. They're pretty bad. That's the Pokemon The Pokemon designs are bad. The the way the game works are bad. The games are bad. I don't <laughs> like them. I, I, uh, no, people, a lot of this... People enjoyed uh, Sun and Moon. Well, the, see, our mutual friend Spencer hates those games and a lot of my exposure with yeah, those later generations comes from him and they do look stupid so i've kind of just you know, absorbed his thoughts of i don't like those old games but i like the new ones and those the the pokemon generations that are in this game were the ones that i'm familiar with and it's just a really good game it's a really fun game that breaks friendships like nothing else <laughs> the, like we yelled over pokemon we got into actual oh arguments God. over pokemon and trust me even if you're not, like, super crazy about Pokemon, it'll happen. You nerds. And it's so fun. I, I'm nerds. looking forward to playing it more. But Arguing over your baby's yes, RPG. Yes, yes, yeah. So Pokemon yeah. Battle Revo- Revolution. Yeah. You can emulate it on PC. Right. Play with your friends. Good. Very good. Well, maybe hit Philip. He'll probably play with you. Yeah, I, he'd probably be down. 
I, I could I would almost bet money that he'd be down. Yeah. So you played anything else this week? Uh, well, I'll let you take control of the conversation with our Halo play, our yeah. Lasso play. Yeah, so we started our Lasso campaign Shortly in Halo 3, after, you, me, and, and my buddy Phil. Shortly after we recorded the podcast for last week, we, you know, yeah, we broke did, up. Yeah, we, we played that. after we recorded, yeah. And um, it's, it's tough. It is the purest definition of hell <laughs> that I've ever experienced. I have... My hands cramped by the time I was done with it. Are you serious? Like, yeah, I was like, oh, God, finally, I'm done. <laughs> that last stretch But I can't hard. say, the relief we felt when we finished that mission. Oh, my God. That was yes. blissful. Halo 3's first mission, for those of you that oh my caught up, is hard. So I have, I have the stats here. So it took us about, uh, we, it took us in total about six hours. But we took an hour break because you had to go to eat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Food a really good break. Stuff. Really good break, I I'm think. sure you love that break. That break was real tough for me and Phil to get back. Oh, really? Me. Yeah. Phil was on the edge of, like, just saying, all right, screw it. Like, I'm out. Um, but I knew if we stopped, we would never come back. No. So I'm like, we have to persevere. Or persevere. We have to get through this first mission. Uh-huh. We have to. So uh, it took us about five hours Yeah. to get oh. through one mission. Now, once <laughs> again, one of the hardest missions in Halo 3. It is. It is probably the hardest there's a few others that i know will be tough but Mm -hmm. i don't know if anything will be tougher than that final push i'm looking to the flood to see how strong they're going to be i'm curious about that as well i don't think it'll be i don't think it'll be nearly as bad but those guys are bullet sponges dude in every single one they are but if you just have like shotguns we're fine that's true yeah um so collectively we had over 400 deaths Mm mm-hmm a lot, a lot of deaths. Oh, my gosh. And I think on Heroic, I think I can solo that mission and get through probably with, like, maybe three deaths. Maybe. Maybe. You know? Yeah. But, oh, my gosh, dude. This it's is another, another world of yeah. hell. Like, it – I had a lot of fun, and the next day I woke up wanting to play more. Um, Phil, not so much. Uh <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I'm with you Phil. Probably not so much either. I'm with Phil. Definitely with Phil. You're definitely with Phil on this. Now you like to play your Dark Souls games. Yes. How does this compare to Dark Souls? Well, Tavin, this is unfairly hard. Unfairly. No, hard. yeah. Dark Souls is reasonable. As hard as sure. it can be, it's reasonable. This sure. is not reasonable. It's not made to be played this way. There's a reason why it's it not. Is that, it, it, it's not. You it, are intentionally yeah. breaking the game to play yes, this. Yes, you way. are. It's not a difficulty that you just choose. Yeah. Because you have to. Set, 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 school, skulls, yeah, and then, yeah, yeah, then yeah. you play it. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a default difficulty setting, no. which even, like, legendary on its own is hard. Uh-huh. This is, like, legendary. Also, all of the rules of Halo are gone. Yeah. Like... No HUD. They're just gone. No shield recharge unless you hit something. You can't see what weapon you're holding. That was the hardest part for me. Enemies, th- really? Because once we set my crosshair, I was. F- oh, I see what you mean. Well, I just looked down at my shadow. It, it, it was the hard shadow thing. will tell you. What yeah, you know. but sometimes I would be like difficult, and I it's still like in the middle of heat of battle. I wouldn't know. Sure. So you accidentally swap weapons. Yeah. And don't know. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh, enemies throw more grenades. The grenades have larger explosions. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was the hardest part for me. Never mind. You're right. The I remember grunts, our deaths were The from, grunts with yeah, the grenades, grenades were fucking ridiculous. Like, I hated those the most. Thankfully, you can one-shot them with things like the battle rifle and yeah, the covenant yeah, yeah, yeah. rifle, but it's still And then the some carbine. weapons just become irrelevant. Like, assault the rifle. assault rifle? Irrelevant. Sniper rifle? It depends. Uh, the brute shot's also very useless now because everything goes flying when you shoot them, and because they take so many hits— you just lose tracking on them, but they have perfect tracking. So I, I would shoot a brute who also had a brute shot, and they'd go flying, and then they'd instantly like one shot me in the air. I don't know if I ever. Well, I definitely used a brute shot, but I don't. I know I don't remember having that, having that issue, which I imagine is because I didn't use the brute shot as much as you. Yes, and you were using it in key areas, whereas I would just default to to battle rifle or covenant carbine right. or something. But yeah, any hit scan weapons just a waste of time. Just a waste of time. I had luck with the needler. Against, like, I killed some brutes well, with Well, the that. Needler explodes when you hit an... And also, that's that's a projectile-based weapon. That's not hit scan. That's true. <gasps> plasma pistol cannot be undersold, though. You use that Dude, a that lot. that plasma pistol destroys your harder enemies. Your brutes, your brute chieftains. You, if you don't have a plasma pistol, what are you doing? No. You're going to be shooting at them for an hour. You hit them with a plasma pistol, charge shot, bam. And then one headshot, they're done. Not so much with the chieftain, because he takes some hit. Exactly. But, or, like, jackals with shields. Man... And the enemies don't flinch when you shoot them. So no. you can't do the classic, like, shoot them in the hand, and then they flinch, and then you shoot them in the head. Can't do that. So now it's like, oh, well, I can either waste an entire clip on his hand, and maybe he'll die, or 
hit him with a plasma, he'll turn around, run away, and I'll just shoot him in the back of the head. Yeah. It, um, yeah. Uh, you have to really come up with new tactics to deal with enemies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We, uh, I had fun. There was definitely some moments where I was like, Jesus, this is egregious. But yes. The most part, I had fun. Just a couple, two, two moments at the end. You know which ones I'm talking about. Oh, see, it was really hard. It, I know which two because it's it's that moment where you start on the cliff and there's snipers and stuff, and then you have to like go to this bridge, and the bridge is kind of like a bottleneck, mm-hmm. and that bottleneck they just throw a bunch of shit down at you, and then but the uh, when you're up on the cliff, previous to that, snipers and grenades, and they throw the whole gambit at you, and that's that's not fun either. Um, I I had trouble on that cliff. The bridge I had less trouble with. It was just a matter of getting the flow right and it just took us a long time to get it right well yeah that's true that is true and there's also a weird strategy in lasso where it's like okay i can either a um bang my head against this wall until hopefully we get it or we can try something new but trying something new requires so much experimentation and so much perseverance to where like you might just be wasting your time and have to revert back to the old strategy anyway so it's just – there's just a part of you that just goes, all right, this is the strat. We're doing this until it works. Yep. That's exactly uh, what it was like sometimes. Yeah. And what's funny is it's like – I still had fun. <laughs> now <laughs> – Like I still had fun. I, I know something you're not going to have fun with. Yeah. And that's hunters. No, I don't think that would be they, they, they hit you better. They hit you more with their lasers. And a grunt takes more damage. Now than ever before. How long does it take to shoot a gr- kill a grunt with just body shots? I mean, who knows? Who knows? We'll find out. I don't think it'll be that bad because they're pretty clumbering and the AI isn't very good for them and so forth. Um, so I think I think that's good on our Halo talk. There's one other game I've been playing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I haven't played as much as I would like because I've also been busy. Work is killing me with these hours, but you know, get this money. Mm-hmm. Um. I've started playing Avengers. Avengers came out. Uh, decided to bite the bullet. Friday, I started on Thursday night. Yeah, I went ahead. You know, I said, fuck it. I want something to play. I want something fun and casual. And this is what I've been fucking yep. wanting right here. This is it. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun with Avengers. It's got a lot of issues. <laughs> a lot of issues. Yeah. This is far from a perfect game. Um, you know, there's just one person i follow on twitter a youtuber that i also watch named the sphere hunter who seems to uh, like acknowledge problems as well but she still loves it it seems yeah. like it seems like everyone's like yeah it has problems but it's fun yeah I'm, i mean you know me i'm pretty hypercritical about everything and maybe the viewers of the show have keyed into this with how much i criticize games like ghost of tsushima and um you know some of the smaller issues i had with last of us and um what else have we played that has come out? I guess that's that's about it. The, the a lot hot, of it. Those, yeah. I, bet, I guess those are the new hotness of yeah, right. since we've started the show. And I'm I'm there with Avengers too. I have that same mindset. Um, but it's just there's so much charm and heart and care put into Avengers that it just kind of works. Yeah, in in what it's trying to emote mm-hmm. from the player, it's fun. Uh, every time Kamala Khan meets a new Avenger, it's it just brings a smile to my face. Um, the story is good enough. The dialogue is still pretty atrocious, <laughs> um, but the acting is so good that it it kind of elevates the dialogue. Which um, honestly, it's so good that they. In that case, they probably just oh, spent and they, all they, that they put that extra acting. money yeah. into into their stu- superstar cast with, um, mm-hmm. you know, Troy Baker, Nolan North, Laura Bailey, Travis Willingham, I, uh, Jennifer Hale plays Maria Hill, yeah, who's yeah. like you're like you're like mission giver type thing. So um, I can imagine them sitting them like all the voice actors together and saying, "Listen, this script we've tried, it's bad, so we need <laughs> you to bring your A game, please." Right. Like, Maybe sound great. I don't know. I don't believe that. I don't believe but, that either. But like, I can, I can uh, just imagine that scenario happening. You could please, but, uh, please make our game have good dialogue, please. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't <laughs> think that. I don't think that's what happened at all. Um, but I, I'll say, I enjoy this game when it is the run around, beat things up, brawler, looter shooter that it's trying to be. 
which not everybody likes that part of the game. I really like that part of the game. I don't like it when it tries to be Uncharted or when it tries to be Tomb Raider because this game is by the people who made the, the Tomb Raider yeah. and uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, uh, the, those two games. They didn't make Shadow, but they made those two. Yes. Um, which are great games. Those two are great games. Um, but it doesn't work here. And there's you can feel this constant tug of war as you're playing between these two games uh-huh. of what they probably wanted Avengers to be and then what maybe Square Enix made them make or something. Uh-huh. There's this constant back and forth because they don't do they don't do the looter shooter as well as uh, Destiny Two or even Division do it. Um, they 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 didn't seem like they had a chance to be as good. Like from uh, no, what I played in the beta, I would say this is better than Anthem, but not much better than Anthem. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Anthem plays fine. It's all the surrounding circumstances that fell an- that Anthem fell apart. And I think that's where Avengers has a chance is because they've got a plan for the future. They've already announced Hawkeye and Spider-Man is coming and uh, the uh, Black Panther has quasi been announced. But with the passing of Chadwick Boseman, they decided to delay yeah. the official announcement. Um, so we have content coming. And I assume pretty soon because I've already seen cutscenes for Hawkeye. Um, yeah, he, he's in the game. He's, he, like he's he's coming and probably pretty soon. I expect him before the end of this year. Mm-hmm. Um, Spider Man's coming early next year. Who knows for the future? I, you know there was that doc report of like Doctor Strange and Captain Marvel and She Hulk and all these other characters. And I hope we get all those. And I hope they're all good. And I hope that they're as charming and as fun. Their storylines are as charming as fun as the ones for the main Avengers in this game. Um. So. With all of that said, uh, and then you add on the wrapping paper of Marvel superheroes, so there's already a little bit of buy-in, like how Jedi Fallen Order is a, a Dark Souls clone, but the wrapping paper of Star Wars allows some buy-in. Mm-hmm. You know, I think Avengers here has that too, um, and I think it's just good enough to where people will keep playing. Um, they can hook people on for just just keep trailing trailing them along. You, you think they can? Well, that sounds negative, but you know, okay. But you, you they, could, they'll have enough content to make people. Stick there will with the be game. a future, and I could see I could see how this game could become at launch. Whew, this game is rough. Uh-huh. To oh hey, it's actually pretty good now. The glitches are minimal, if at all. Frame rate doesn't dip anymore. Um, the storylines have gotten better. Uh, all these things. So it really depends on how that first expansion works. How big is this Hawkeye stuff happening? Is it just a character in a single storyline, or is there like more stuff being added? You know, um, the the villains are pretty weak in my. They mind. are. I like the main villain, um, but the ones sur- surrounding him, not so much. Just tell me who is the main villain again? I think Modok. Modok, that's who it was. Yeah. Yeah, and you see kind of his dissension into madness, and I'm really enjoying seeing that storyline mm-hmm. play out. As of right now, for for uh, people at home listening, I I've. Unlocked Iron Man, um, and we're we're getting the base of operations built up so that we have, like, a flying base or whatever. And then I assume we're going to go get Black Widow, and then I assume we're going to figure out what happened to Captain America. They keep telling me he's yeah. dead. I don't believe you. Who do you think is coming first, Thor or Captain America? Oh, Thor. I forgot about Thor. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think probably Black Widow, Thor, and then Cap mm-hmm. to end point. And then Cap will lead you straight into the uh, uh, climax of the game. Oh, okay. Um so, yeah, I think the story is fine. It's not great. It's better than I thought it would be. It's better when you compare it – when you compare this game to its competitors, it's got the best story out of all of them. Really? Um, yeah, it's got a better story, Divi- story than Destiny. It's got a better story than Division. It's got a be- better story than Anthem. <laughs> um, what little there was. Right. Um, you seem pleased with the game so far, though. Huh? You seem pleased with the game so far. <sighs> I'm satisfied. Mm-hmm. I've yet to play enough to see how satisfied mm-hmm. I am with it, though. I feel like this will be a game that you pick up, and then you beat the main stuff, and then you may just kind of drop it. I might. I might. Or I might, you know, come back for every expansion and then put it back down. Uh, I doubt I'll be the player who comes in every week and gets, like, the new exotic items. Or uh-huh. Like, yeah. I doubt that's not going to be me. But I'll come in. I'll probably come in for every expansion if, it's, if people say it's worth the time. Mm-hmm. Then I'll be like, okay, yeah, sure, I'll jump in. Oh, excuse me. 
but um, I've got serious issues with this game. Uh-huh. Um, the, the there's that constant back and forth between the two types of games it's trying to be, which is constantly um, unnerving mm-hmm. and constantly a hindrance. But I can get past that. Um, glitches galore. Kalama, uh-huh. Kal- Kal- Kamala Harris. Kamala Khan, not Harris. <sighs> I pay too much attention to the elections. <laughs> right. <laughs> Kamala Khan, her arms glitch out all the time, and they start doing, like, stretchy physics uh, and stuff. And I, s- I saw that in the beta. In the beta. And it's still there? It's still there. Uh, there's some, like, physics glitches with Hulk. Um, Iron Man, I've seen, had a couple of animation glitches. All of this, I can get past. It's annoying. It's immersion-breaking, but I can get past it. Um, frame rate dips. All the time. Uh huh. As soon as more than one thing is happening, your frame rate drops to like single digits. No. Um, that a little more egregious because mm-hmm. that's affecting gameplay. Um, oh, I should also say I saw a glitch uh, this morning on Twitter. Someone was playing Black Widow and the game, and you know, you do like your little like execution final move yeah. thing on enemies and it goes slow mo for you so uh-huh. you can see it in all its glory or whatever. Uh, I saw a glitch. The game stayed in slow mo post. Really? <laughs> yes. Oh God! So he's fighting these enemies in slow motion, and they're moving in slow mo too. So, like maybe like a two minute fight extended to ten minutes because he's fighting them in slow mo. Jesus Christ! Uh, that's a that's a big issue. And if it you're, didn't like, tired stop of that. until the fight ended. Uh huh. And they did like a cutscene start, and then it was like, okay, now we're back to normal. Uh, it's, it's just no. It's just as soon as the fight ended. Yeah. <laughs> and it was funny because Black Widow even said, "All right, we're wasting time. Let's get to it." <laughs> and the guy playing was like, "I know, you've been in slow mo." Uh, and he didn't restart that at all. I figured he would. That'd nah, he fought through to the end because he didn't want to restart that battle. Uh, it's definitely one of those games. Like if you lose progress, you're done for the day. You're like, "All oh, right, really? I don't want to play anymore. Like I'm good because it's just not good enough." Mm-hmm. Um. Though it it has a lot of fun in it, like, um, but yeah. So those frame rate dips, a little more egregious. It's much harder to get past that. The thing that is killing me, Connor, and we talked about this before the show. The thing that is absolutely killing me, and I don't know why this is the thing that's most egregious to me, but it is. The subtitles in this fucking game are atrocious. <laughs> they are almost so bad that if you are a gamer with disabilities, you can't play this game. Like, uh huh. Like if you're like a death gamer or something, because there's too much oh, happening. Honestly, wouldn't that be better no. for death gamers? You don't no. think so? No, because it's very specific with what's going on. It's not that it's specific; it's giving too much. It, because you don't want it, the only thing you want with subtitles is for the game to tell you what the character is saying. It's all you want, mm-hmm. and then. If you're a gamer with a disability, you probably want, like, the subtitles to have different colors for different characters so that you can differentiate between the two. Mm-hmm. Um, but this game, uh, it's got your subtitles, which are sometimes wrong. Like, the actor read a different line. Ah, uh, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, there are spelling errors, which is very bad. Um, there are There is um, uh, temporary text still in the game. So, like, it'll be like... Soldier says line, but the subtitle reads soldier underscore one soldier and then location uh-huh. and then your colon. Like obviously that – like it's filler text and then it's some line that is filler. And it's obvious like, ooh, that, that's just code that they hadn't fixed yet. Like that's broken. Um, and then the, the like most a- annoying thing to me – is that it's just not it's not just subtext for uh, dialogue. They're j- they're giving you text for character actions. So like, whenever Kamala Khan jumps off a cliff, it'll say Kamala jumps off cliff cliff lands next to Hulk. To which you look at the screen and go, I know, <laughs> I saw her do it. <laughs> or it'll be like uh, Kamala Khan thinks intently. I know. Huh. I can see her do that. She has a or it'll sometimes even give you characters' inner thoughts. Like, 
Stop! You see, stop! That's one of the reasons why they have motion captures, because you can see the emotions we play it on their face. see it. Exactly. Well, it, it, it's motion capture, but then they lay animate. So, like, yeah, between the it, actor even, and the animators, like, we can see It's it. more specific than it's ever been before, so yeah. you don't need to be as specific with things you, like that. You didn't need to do that no. when it was 16-bit. Like, or when it was, when it was uh, 32, yeah, like, and, like, we were just now starting with uh, 3D animation, and there was no real, like, facial animations. You didn't need to do that. You don't need to do it ever. Don't mm-hmm. ever, ever, ever do this. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of those third-party indie games that you see, like, they're, they're usually in sprite form and stuff like that, so it's very text-heavy. And as jokes, they specifically, like, say very specific thoughts that a certain character is having. Like it seems like it's more but in like a bre- in a yeah. in like a break the fourth yeah, wall exactly. like poking fun at the fact that you're playing a video game. Yeah, Wait, yeah. this isn't now. Yeah, just like oh, we're being serious. This is just somebody screwed up or somebody mm-hmm. didn't have enough time yep. or uh, it's probably somebody mm-hmm. didn't have enough time. Oh, you know it had to be that if they have code in some of the subtitles instead of actually yeah, the like, words. Like yeah. it's just broken and it it detracts from the experience and. <laughs> it's so frustrating. It's more frustrating for you than I think most people would be. Because Maybe. You, I, I assume most people get you know their emotion broken every time Kamala Khan's arm goes through a wall. Mm-hmm. But for me, this is killing me. Mm-hmm. Like, because mm-hmm. every time it happens, I go, fuck, I know. what. And then, it, and then it reminds me of everything else that's happening in this game that I don't like. Uh-huh. Or that, obviously, we didn't have enough time. Like, and it... it it's the thing that breaks my immersion that makes me go, fuck, this is a video game, and this video game was really rushed out the door. Uh-huh. Um, Which kind of people were fearful of that. It seemed like they were kind of rushing it, and they did. Guess what? They were they, rushing they it. They did. They were rushing it. Um, still good. Still fun. Still like it. Still want to keep playing. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm going to keep playing it as soon as you, know, you and I are done recording our podcasts, and we're going to play Terminator Salvation tonight. And I'm going to jump back on to yep. Avengers and play when you leave. Now, um, tab it. Yeah. I was debating whether I should bring this up. Oh, boy. But I felt like I had to. Okay. What are you playing Marvel's Avengers on? We talked about this last week. No, no, I know. But, like, now you bought the game. You yeah. have it now. What'd we you t- buy we it ta- for? We talked about this. But I'm just asking what you buy it for. Connor, we talked about I didn't this see it. Week. Connor, Connor, do you really have to, have to rub my nose? I didn't see nose? it. Do you have to rub my nose? You did see it, Connor. You saw it no, when I you walked in the I didn't today. see it, so what's... You did. You watched me. What's it being played on, Tavin? You what's it being played on? What's it being played on? What's it being played on? Did you contradict yourself, Tavin? I didn't, I, you wouldn't contradict yourself, though, would you? Okay, Connor, can I give you my reasoning? I, I know your reasoning, but... Uh, see, my reasoning is the same exact thing as yours, Well, I but I never made any claims. Well, without my reasoning, I would have played it on Xbox. But because of my reasoning, it's different. Oh, you could have done that, too. I could have done that. But here's the thing. Uh-huh. There was absolutely no chance in hell you would have played with me on Xbox. Zero chance. There is a minimal chance you're going to play with me on PlayStation. So I decided, hey, at least there's a chance. Let me get it on PlayStation so that maybe my buddy Connor will come and have fun with me. And, you know, we'll fly around as Iron Man and Hulk and, and Black Widow and all this Thor nonsense. And, and Tavin, thank yeah. you for doing that choice. Yeah. But for the uninitiated. I fucking hate you. I remember a story we covered a while ago of Square Enix All right, guys, very so that was scummy, where Spider-Man was only going to be on the PS4, and you were going to play it as a, yeah. as a, uh, a stand against stick Capitalism it to the man, yeah. yeah. and now you're playing it on PS4. I just had to point it out, you know, something just made me think, I should probably say something. Otherwise, am I really... We talked about this last week, Connor! Well, now you heard it this week. Maybe next week. Maybe next time you We're bring not, up the game. If you bring this up ever again, I'm cutting it out. <laughs> All right, I'll just take my, my win for this, this you episode. Take your fucking win, and, and can we move the fuck I on? I cashed it in. There we go. Oh, my God. Are you playing anything else this week? Nope. Nope. Okay, neither am I. <laughs> God, I fucking hate you. <laughs> I had to say it. I had to say <sighs> it. All right, well, this has been your Two Pennies Games Cast episode seven or something. Ugh. About three you. episodes since the Spider-Man comic. You really soiled my. You really soiled the end of my experience here, Connor. That's that's what, that's what I was debating whether I should say it or not, and I did. I feel like a weight's been lifted off my chest. Fucking hate you. We're getting ice cream after this because of that. Now uh, we, I said we could we could get ice cream at any point in time. I said that. Yeah, we're getting ice cream after this, and then we're gonna come back and we're, we're gonna record next week's episode. Because as a reminder, I'm out of town next week, and we will not be recording. No. Uh, a podcast on the latest and greatest news. So instead, we're having a more evergreen episode about top 10 PlayStation 4 games. Um, 
I, I think it'll be a fun conversation. We're going to have a lot of fun. I'm, ex- I'm, I'm excited to see what's on your list. I, I don't know what's on your list. I hope you're excited to see what's on mine. You could probably just guess it. <laughs> I probably could guess most of it. You could probably guess most of it. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, catch us every Monday, 8 a.m. Uh, to, to, if, you, if you're curious about any news that is happening this week, and you're like, oh, I wonder what Connor or Tavin is uh, thinking about it, you can follow us on Twitter. Mine is at Tavin Bothell. Yours is – you've changed it recently. I've changed it recently, so who yeah. knows? It's uh. Uh, at – I want to say I, con with two N's underscore Elliot with two T's. Uh, 117 is your tag. I put it in the yes. description. Yes. Ah, oh, see, I put it in the description. I can't even remember my own. Huh. There it is. That's good. There good it is. You. I, you know, I kind of liked – because you, your tag used to be that idiot Connor. I kind of yeah. liked that. Well, That's here's fun. the thing. I'm a journalism student, and I was told – by my professors. Well, if you're going to have a Twitter handle, you need to be more professional. So I feel like no, all right, we're going to we're going to contact this person for uh, you know maybe some some news or some like information we got to give them. What's his handle? Oh, that idiot Connor. Hmm. Maybe not. Nah, that's fun. I like. Oh, it. I, I like it too. But I was like, oh, I'll just change it. It's probably all smart right. to do that. Anyway. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Your yeah. old one was better. It was. But con underscore Elliot. 117. Which 117, by the way, has no relation to Halo whatsoever. Yeah, I don't believe you. <laughs> no, uh, it has no relation. I don't believe you. Uh, anyways, uh, thank you so much for listening. Have a great week.